How y'all doing, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the group discussion portion of Daryl K says. I'm Jacob. Y'all know Quinn as Ali, and of course the man Daryl K. So today's group discussion will be on the subject of violence in comic books. When is it too much? Does it help comic books? Can comic books strive and survive without the violence? Let's discuss these topics. Now, first question I pose. What to y'all is one of the most violent moments in any comic book you've ever read? Straight off the cuff. Um, I honestly have to say, uh, one of the most violent moments I've ever experienced was, uh, there's a four-issue mini that Mark Millar did with McNiven. It's called Nemesis. It's probably the most gruesome thing I've ever read in my life. Um, he forces two children under the age of nine years old to literally, you know, have intercourse with each other oh. and oh, have God. an incest baby. That is so sad. Well, that's sick. It is. And mm -hmm. this is, uh, so I was actually going to start with that off with, uh, two words. Mark Millar. He is, uh, just known for going way over the top. Uh, I feel like that has got him spotlight in comics. Uh, he's, if you guys aren't familiar, uh, one of his most notable works is Civil War for Marvel, but he's also done really bloody, really gory things for Marvel as well, such as Old Man Logan and has dived now into his own, his own, uh, <laughs> and it's also dived into his own company now called Moir World, which features Jupiter's Legacy, Kick-Ass, uh, Nemesis, Superior, things like that. So, um, anyway, Allie? Well, I mean, we cannot discuss violence without discussing Crossed. Okay. Which, the first trade I found intriguing. It was an interesting premise. Mm -hmm. Since then, I feel like it has just become straight up torture porn, and the writing has degraded significantly okay. because they switch writers. The second thing, the most, one of the most shocking things I think I remember seeing was having spoilers in Walking Dead when Carl gets half his face blown off. Like that two page spread of just half of his face missing. It was rough. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, well, I guess I gotta top y'all guys. So I'm going to say actually the book I reviewed today on today's episode, the Caligula book. The Caligula book is very very disturbing so basically there's a scene where you find out about the main care about, uh, character about why he hates Caligula and basically what happens is, is that Caligula breaks into a family home um, kills all the kids chops all the kids um, son heads off beats off the husband to the little bit of his life still alive but beat up just real bad then sits up there rapes his wife on the table then, after Caligula gets done raping her, he cuts her head off. Then tells her so his soldiers to rape her. And oh. then, after each soldier gets done raping her, they chop off a body part and a body part in two. She's chopped up into a whole bunch of pieces. Then, after it's over, he puts all the whole family body into a bowl of soup and eats it. So, Caligula is a historical figure. Yes. Known for his brutality. Yes, he is. All right. Uh, with that, holy crap, Jacob. Where do we go now? <laughs> well, where do we go now? And you see, you know, and I can understand, yes, he is a historical figure. And if you're going to write a graphic novel based on him, then it's going to have to be vile. Oh, but yeah. who is the audience when we're talking about comic books and graphic novels? Well, uh, mm, these yeah. things is a wide, it's a very wide. Well, it, no. It's a very wide <laughs> spectrum. And, like, we're all adults here. You know, we read these. I've been reading comic books since I was younger, like most of us have been. And I've been susceptible to some of the violence in there. It's been all right well, for me. Well, there I, can't be no... We will be kidding ourselves if we said comics has not evolved to this point. To the point where the violence in the comics just seems standard. I mean, if you think about it, Popeye first debuted in 1919. Thimble Comics. That was not... That was a fun comic. That was fun. That wasn't really like... That was before violence came along. I mean, we got to talk about Garfield, the Peanuts. I mean, people like that. I mean, because those are comics. People forget that stuff. I mean, Archie comics. Mm -hmm. I mean, just in general, has Archie ever needed violence for their to sell for them to keep their fans? Mm -hmm. Archie never needed that. He just needed Jughead and Veronica and Betty. So the next question. Now, a lot of us are fans of you know popular superheroes. You know, of course, I'm a Superman fan. You know, we all have those you no know, popular superheroes. So like, more than like the Punishers and the Deathstroke. And, and you know maybe even the Wolverines, where you expect to find some type of grotesque 
violence in the comic book. How do you feel about like finding that in a comic book like a Batman? Um, some of it's kind of unnecessary. Like I feel like um, even though Green Lantern had Black Lanterns, I felt like it was a little unnecessary for uh, the leader of the Black Lanterns, Necron, like literally had like an open cavity in his chest to where you had this gross black bleeding heart. You know, was that necessary? No, but I feel like at least Commerce Code Authority has really taken this desensitization a little bit mm -hmm. on what comics are these days. Like, uh, if you guys are familiar with Avatar Press, mm -hmm. they're definitely known for their brutality and thing, you know, things of, of that nature in their comics. It's almost like a, a standard given. Uh, we think. I don't know. Like, it's hard because, like, I understand. Like, they keep wanting to push the envelope because you, you know, so much of our movies are like that nowadays. And like, it's just that it's the culture we're growing up in now where it is more acceptable, and we really don't think twice about it. And like, for like I was I mentioned across, like I bought the first like four trades, mm -hmm. and as it sat on my shelf longer, I was like, how would I feel in like 20 years? One of my kids was like, um. What is this? You read this. Why do you have it? So, it's hard to like. I don't. Under, I don't know. That's like, the that's the question that I often come up with. Like, not even just like my children, but children in general. Yeah. Because like I think about some of my favorite graphic novels and stories. Like, if we get into Mark Miller's Sin City, like I loved it movie wise and book wise, and mm -hmm. it is extremely violent. It is. Watchmen again, another one. Gosh, loved even, movie and book wise. Even the Dark Knight Returns is just like okay, pure. Like like the Brutal Joker murdering first people all, first, first, all, did the first of all, the Joker was running around shooting people in the tunnel of love out of all places in the tunnel of love and he I mean, he legitimately had a battering in his eyeball for like how many minutes before he died? Mm -hmm. Five, ten. Yeah. And like, <laughs> like that like even the end of Watchmen or movie where the Rorschach explodes, I'm like, wow, this is crazy. It's just like the book, but I'm also thinking, wow, how many kids are watching this? Or how how accessible comic books are to the kids. Like, I read The Spectre, and I'm a big fan of The Spectre. And The Spectre is just extremely brutal. In the one yeah. graphic novel I read, he had this doctor on the table because of how many women he had murdered. Oh, yeah. And the you know, women... The of judgment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They came back from the dead, and they were ripping his, his intestines out on the mm -hmm. operating table, and they all had disfigured faces. Or even... Or even when he kills a child molester in that book, it's just like it just gets really grotesque to the point where mm -hmm. I actually like there was like a time because I read Old Man Logan yep. and then Spectres back to back. I was like, I need something soft for yeah, a while, right. like cause maybe it's like a I mean, load well, of blood. Even even mm -hmm. just recently, I think Daryl and I uh, reviewed uh, Justice League 23, and there's just this really gross scene where basically Cyborg. His cybernetic limbs are torn from his flesh parts, oh, God. literally to the point where you see, like you know, spine mm. and ripping flesh mm. and his guts and gore. And it's just gross and it's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And even recently, uh, spoilers to you guys, reading Forever Evil number two, Batman comes in with his like you know flayed, you know whatever's left of his human remains. Mm -hmm. Just his spine, just kind of sitting out there on the operating table, and I'm like, "You've got to be kidding me, do you see?" I'm like, "This isn't exactly needed." It's, it's, it's <laughs> not even that. Well, I think what we also have to remember too is that in the long run, this is all about, um, fantasy. People right. make this up. Yeah. So it was like, I guess you can go back because I actually read the, um, a book recently called the um, the, um, the um, Golden Days of Nickelodeon, mm -hmm. and what they talk about is Ren and Stimpy, how oh, Ren yeah. and Stimpy was a pioneer for cartoons, but the reason they got rid of the original creator of Ren and Stimpy is because they tried to basically get rid of, of him for why the show was so big because of the, yeah. you know, the, the outrageous humor, stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was just ridicule. And he said when they fired him, like, you cannot stop my creativity. You cannot stop um, our fantasies, our creative. Because if it, what's the point of having, like, a creative writer or well, a creative some, writer? Yeah, I mean, some cartoons are even asked to be toned down. I thought it was really... Funny, the other day my mom was mentioning how uh, when I was younger I used to watch Ed, Ed and Eddie and that just, I don't know why, but that I started to do some research. Apparently Ed, Ed and Eddie was first pitched as an idea for cartoon, or I mean, sorry, for uh, 
Adult Swim. It was literally going yeah. to be an adult-centered show. Well, that was the they same thing. They were asked thing. to tone it down for a kid's Well, show. that was the same thing with the pop-up girls. The pop-up girls were supposed to be called whoop up girls, and they were supposed to be really violent, like, yeah. and sluts, too. Like, yeah. Yeah, seriously. Like, it's and just, they had to change a lot of data kind of. My next question. Have you ever noticed in certain comic books, uh, I'll bring up the issue of Cyborg Superman that uh, I read thanks to Quinn's review. Um, mm -hmm. In the issue, um, you ever notice that like in certain graphic novels or comic books, like the brutality will be done to like a race of aliens, mm -hmm. so there's no relation when we see mm -hmm. it. So it's like, oh, that's aliens. So you know, it's not as grotesque because it's not humans; they're not real. Mm -hmm. Or oh, those are robots that they're viciously oh. shooting and cutting their heads off. So I, it's I disagree. Fine. It's almost the same for me. I mean, does anyone remember the C-section scene in like Prometheus the movie? Yeah, that scene was pretty brutal. Yeah. I mean, we, we want to get to the movies. We could just start bringing up. Oh. Yeah. Like, I mean, for example, in, um, I believe it's the it's the remake of George Romero made of his own movie, um, Night of Living Dead, where mm -hmm. the, or is it, mm -hmm. no, 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 Diary okay. of the Dead. In Diary of the Dead, the zombie girl's hanging up by her ponytail from the, the branch, mm -hmm. and the rednecks are shooting her, and they end up shooting her right at her jaw, so it's just her, like, brain swinging and her head swinging. And, you know, we are the monsters, we are the walking dead. And then also you see it in AI, artificial intelligence, with Steven um, mm -hmm. Spielberg, with, you know, we're torturing these the robots. And mm -hmm. that movie makes me cry, oh my god. Every single time I watch it, so... You know? I mean, what the same message is still the same. I mean, it's the same reason why back in the 90s, why Marvel, if you go back to all the animation cartoons, why they never used bullets. They try to use laser guns all the time yes. instead. Yes. To try to make the violence scene, hey, we're not telling you that to go shoot people with bullets. It's laser, so it's okay. But it was still the same message or whatever. That's why if you actually go back in the 90s and watch Marvel cartoons, none of them ever used any bullet guns or whatever. Yeah, I was going to say, that, that's used a lot, especially yeah. in um, X-Men. I, um, yeah. I put out the instance in uh, the Animatrix movie, which is like, you know, it's like all these animated short stories that like, mm -hmm. break the gap between the movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And in the story of um, the second Renaissance part one, they explain how the robots were built and the revolt. And there's this really like graphic scene of them like beating up a female robot who looked like like prostitute like, but they were beating her until the skin came off oh. and the mechanical head came off. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be like sick. Yeah. Like I can watch like strangely enough something like kick ass to or read stuff like the specter and not flinch a little but when i saw that i was like oh my god like the, the representation which you know it's for like right. to go what you were saying like even if it is like out of the creativity and the imagination mm -hmm. it can get so vile sometimes it's just like well that always gets to the thing i always used to ask myself too and just always think about like these people that make up this stuff like, for example, the guy that makes the Saw movies, the guy who actually sat down there and wrote all the scenes for every Saw movie about how to torture people, mm -hmm. don't you think this guy should be in jail? It's frightening um, to think about. I mean, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, you have to think seven, seven was the forefront of all that stuff. True, true. I mean, and so, I mean... It's kind of like we're programmed point, to is... take this, though. Like, even yeah. as young kids, we're programmed to take this, because it's, it's even in yeah. cartoons. Just like on the episode of Young Justice, when season two first came on, Lobo came on there. A Lobo literally ripped the guy in half. It was a robot, but you got the picture. Lobo rips people in half. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess what you need to really scathe away from this is reality versus fiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I can say that I have more of a stomach for, like, Saul movies and things like that because I, I, I know that, that line that's drawn. But um, would, would I nowadays pick up some comics that I would 20, 30 years ago? No. Uh, I just had a mother come in the other day saying, like, listen, I'm, I want to buy some superhero books, but I'm buying this for a Catholic school library. And how hard and how hard that was for me to pick out some of the, the titles that I normally would off the shelf in order to hand this to her. I couldn't hand her a Superman book. I couldn't hand her some <laughs> Avengers things. I mean, like, I had Just to really be careful. Box of Archie comics. And, and that, isn't, that, isn't that crazy <laughs> in a time where you you got to say something like, I don't know if I can hand you a Superman book because right. it's gotten so violent. Mm -hmm. So for my final question, um, death. Recently in uh, the Batman's Damian Wayne just died and this is Batman is notorious for people being killed yes. crippled and stuff like that Batman oh, yeah. gets pretty real 
Yeah. Like, when do you think, or more so, when when do you think, and what comic do you think overuses death? Overuses it? I just yeah. I feel like, um, especially Marvel and DC imprints use it almost to the point where it's almost desensitizing the whole aspect of it because. Honestly, the other day, and sorry to you guys that haven't read previews lately, I was completely not surprised to see headlining on Amazing Spider-Man 700.1. Guess who's back? Peter Parker. Exactly one year to the day after he died. It's like they they kill off the, the character in order to come up with a creative idea, which works, but they don't give it enough time, enough running time, I feel like. You know, like, uh, I actually just had an interview with another, uh, with another comic book, uh, website, and they asked, you know, who do you wish stayed dead? And I was honestly like, you know, Bruce Wayne, because it was cool to see the sidekick kind of become the hero, and just... Man, I tell people when, all the time, when I Bruce love Wayne, Richard Grayson as Batman. Yeah, that's he what I'm saying. cool Batman. He really that's was. That's what I'm saying. It's, uh, you know, I liked Bucky coming as, you know, the... The new Captain America. He was flawed. He was imperfect. He was, he was not your stereotypical Captain America. Mm -hmm. And so I just I feel like these days they use it for dramatic effect, and then it's almost completely reversed in the process. Yeah, you don't even like care because yeah. it's like hey, you're you like oh Peter Parker's gone. Oh no, that's exactly. okay. Hit me a bag message. Yeah. that's okay. Yeah, I don't know if I can th specifically think of one comic that overuses death, per se. I mean. I read a lot of the indie stuff, and a lot of the stuff I read is horror, so, and a lot of it's like post-apocalyptic things. So I, you know, I come to expect that with the genres that I read. So I don't know if I'm if I can make the best argument, but yeah, I definitely would. I can see like if you're gonna kill off a character, commit to it, not be like, oh no, he's time traveling back into the present and crazy things like, just yeah. like stick with it. Like I don't know, I just I think it's a cheap gimmick these yeah. days. It I is agree. cheap. Yeah. And uh, Daryl. Yeah. What are you thinking? I'm thinking a lot of things right now because death is definitely um, one of the things that is overused and I definitely um, agree um, with all y'all were saying honestly about death. I feel like it's overused just for a certain extent because I don't never get worried when my favorite superhero dies or more just because I know another writer is going to come along and rewrite it. Right. That's why I was like even if you become a writer it's kind of frightful to know that you can use something as powerful as death but then the company could just come up and just say, well, we know you killed this guy, but whatever, we're we'll bringing him back anyway because we want to. Like, it's not even like meaningful to me to kill people because, like you said, I love love Richard Grayson as Batman. I thought he was a spectacular Batman. Like, that was awesome to me. Like, also too, like uh, when uh, when um Barry died, when Flash died, Barry actually did die for a while while yeah. he took over, but eventually Barry came back, and I was like, eh, you know, like and that you know happens what? a lot in comics. I'm gonna ask a quick question. Literally one, one very quick answer. Let's see if we can get an answer like that quick. Think of one character that hasn't come back in the last ten years. Jean Grey. Exactly. <laughs> it's not that common, is it? Rorschach. Rorschach. <laughs> that hasn't come back. That has, has not, not come, come back. Dead and gone. Can they always come back and die still though? Like they kill him constantly that she feel like Rory. he's dead? Because if that's the case, it's Ted Core. Because Ted Core purpose in almost every canon DC storyline is to kill him. Oh, yeah. but to answer the, the other question just for a second, uh, obviously the comic book I'm going to say is Batman. Now, like I said, I read Spectre, which is a lot of death. Just like every page is death, <laughs> which I'm okay with because I knew that what that came with that comic. Mm -hmm. But like Batman, just like for the for the Bruce Wayne dying factor, like that, and he's back. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. And then the Jason Todd coming back as Red Hood and then killing people. Mm -hmm. And then Batman's like, okay, I don't like you, but you're gonna stay around. Well, like that's another thing. And then the Joker and how much he kills. It's just like this comic book is just like I just feel like certain. I just feel like certain Batmans can't survive without death in their comic. You know, I always felt like that was a kick in the butt to the fans. That whole Jason Todd thing, thinking about it now. And actually, the perfect example that we can use for this, just because they actually had the fans voted, hey, do you want Robin to live? They had, when that first came out, they had the fans voted, hey, exactly. do you want Robin to live or not? And I was like, y'all want him to die? Cool, he's dead. And I was like, oh my God, Robin's dead. And, yeah, I know. But, you know, unwraps the bandages. Oh my gosh, it's Jason Todd. No, just a dude with cosmetic surgery just to mess with that man's head. I like that. That, that was fun. That was fun. 
When I know the cool storylines on Red when Red was actually tough to me. Yeah. He was tough in that story. But uh, any final closing statements? Um, art imitates life. So, of course, if there's death in life, there's going to be death in comic books, there's going to be death in all literature. Mm -hmm. I just feel like certain times as comic book fans that we might overlook how much death we're reading on a regular basis. Okay, Kwan. Cool. Um, I, I just honestly feel like uh, it's become a, a cliche, but it's something that we're kind of used to at this point. Um, I feel like there's other ways for for gimmicks to happen other than, oh, Bruce Wayne died, no, no, he's time traveling, I lied, you know, <laughs> just, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I was still one I'm still trying to figure out, but, but uh, but, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, retire them, do something, you know, death, DC, Marvel fans, image, anybody, really, it's not as dramatic as it used to be, well, let's try something new. Um, I was struck recently, um, a lot of times a character can die, and you know, you're, you know, you accept it. I took a, a hit really hard in one of the last trades of Walking Dead, I won't say who it is. I spoiled it on one of my own videos, my dear review, on volume 17, Walking Dead. But, and other times, you know, you just kind of roll with it. And, uh, it just surprised me, I was reading Revival, and in the first volume, this, one of the dead, undead women, is she's pulling out her teeth, because they keep growing and it hurts, so she keeps pulling them out with pliers. That, I think, most recently, has been one of the most gra gruesome things, right? Like, set the book down and be like, oh, this is really freaking gross. But I'm not so much bothered by, like, the undead eating people. I'm not sure what that really says about me, but it's interesting when you catch yourself taken, a taken aback by a piece of art, like, so strongly, and it it's just interesting to see what catches your eye and what doesn't, like, what makes you pause. I'm pretty sure the fans have just done a lot about you from that. <laughs> I have a thing with teeth. I don't want to lose my teeth. That's cool. Mm. And my closing statement is going to be just this. Violence in comics is a lot. They should tone it down. People do die a lot in comics to the point that you don't even care no more. So let's just make everybody immortal like my boy Vandal Savage so they can just wait for everybody else to die. <laughs> That kills all, right, all well, He brings lives. it back to Vandal Savage. <laughs> of course, and of for course. Anybody, for everyone here, how Dale K says. And that's, that's what Daryl K says. <laughs>